All right, this is my kayak. I've uh, already done a few things to it. Put my front rod holder mount on there. Put some eyelet eye straps down. That's basically what I've done to modify it so far. Before I went on my trip, and a lot of, because a lot of my stuff didn't come in for my trip, but I finally got my dry hatches and my fishing rod holders for the back. And I've also, as you can notice on my daughter's kayak, I've also mounted a rod, got a rod holder mount on there too. But so today I'm using a drill, I've used a drill with a one inch bit to do it the holes. I made a template for my dry hatch. Use the bit to drill holes all the way around. Now I'm using a Dremel to basically cut this all out. It's not very hard. Just to give you an idea on how I'm doing it, I'll uh, show you again when I got the hole ripped out. After I uh, get the hole ripped out, get it all fairly smooth with Dremel, I'm going to sand it down and then I'll be inserting my dry hatch. And I am also going to do the exact same on the back of my daughter's. You can see the template there. So she has access to the back of her kayak as well when we do overnighters or go camping and stuff. Okay, so now I got this all uh, drilled out and dremeled. I made sure it works. Fits in perfectly. Now I just gotta... I'm gonna put the screws in and then I'm gonna pull it all out glue all around under here and glue around the screws so it's nice and nice and sealed tight and I'll show you it when it's done first dry hatch done one more to go like I said I'm using a one inch bit just going so far apart Digging out the holes. I guess if I wanted to, I could, like there, go hole to hole. But I'm going to be using the Dremel anyway, so it really doesn't matter. To smooth it all out and get the perfect edging. A little bit harder doing it one-handed. Hold my camera. Yeah. I'll show you more of my when I start dremeling. Or maybe actually I'll show you when it's all done. Again.
Got hers all cut out and dremeled. Just got to sand her down, but just to show you how it looks. Pop it open. Love these little dry hatches too. Because even though it has a bag, take the bag out and you got access to the bottom. Store more stuff that you don't mind getting wet or if you got actual dry bags, they'll keep your stuff dry. Because water gets in no matter what, it'll get down there. So but and then you'd use the top compartment as storage for your phone or anything like that. I'd still recommend even putting them in thick Ziploc bags or something like that. Just be sure that everything's dry. Because depending on the amount of water you get in there, I'm sure that bag will get wet. Okay, I don't know if you see it, but yeah, you can see it. I got my templates already done for my rod holders. And I'm going to use the same one inch bit. I'm going to drill right in the center. And then I'll, I'll dremel around, but knowing how the fishing rod holders are they're kind of they're angled so i'll have to make this a little bit um oblong or umblong whatever honestly the best template would probably be a, a nice size egg but i'm not going to use an egg for a template i'm just gonna i'll uh dremel as i go along and i'll show you what it looks like when it's done there's my holes Instead of going oblong, I just made them a little bit thicker. So as you see, they fit in quite nice. And I should mention, just as a what I used as a template, I used um, a toilet paper roll and just went a little bit wide with the marker around it. But yeah, fit in quite nice. And as you can see, Perfect room. Uh, I'm not gonna be. I'll be drilling. I didn't mess it up, so <laughs> thank God. But I'll be uh, have lots of room for the screws and stuff too. So good cut. Now that I've got the holes all cut out for everything, rod holders and dry storages, and they're perfect. Well, as close to perfect as you can really get. I'm just going to use it. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. Just cheap stuff. Get all the extra shavings and stuff off. Kind of clean it up. So I could uh, fasten everything down and glue everything. On at least a decent surface, so you can pretty much use any sandpaper. I'm just using cheap dollar store sandpaper. Thanks, Ace. Ace, my uh, slobber puss boxer who decided to come over and uh, slobber all over my boat. <laughs> Him and my other dog, Diesel, are chasing each other around and playing right now. Love dogs, I got full purebred boxer and boxer mix and a lab Rottweiler mix. But yeah, I'll do this for all, every hole. Make sure it's sanded down. Best it can be. And then it'll be ready to, I'll be ready to screw my holes in and fasten it all up and, and then pull everything up and glue it. I'll take you through those steps too. Okay, so when you get your dry hatch, you got this seal ring that slides over this part or under that part either which way so that it helps keep it 
watertight whatnot. What I'm going to do, if you can see, has the holes. I'm going to put, I'm using vinyl glue, but marine glue is probably best, but vinyl glue works too. I'm going to put thin layer of vinyl glue in between all the screw holes, all the way around it, and then fasten this to it. And then I'll let that dry, and then I'll uh, get to the next step. Okay, now that I got this all glued down, glued to it, I'm going to take my glue, put a nice bead. all the way around and I am going to carefully place my dry hatch down onto it there Press it really good. I'm actually going to straighten it out here, too. And in every hole, I'm going to put some glue, too, because I want it sealed really good, even the screws. string of glue. I'll wipe that up later. And now all I'm going to do is use my drill and screw in all the screws. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And that is that one done. And I'll let that dry. Let the glue dry for uh, 24 hours. And then it shall be ready to go out on the, on the water. It's a thing of beauty. On to the next one. Same thing on this one. A nice A nice good bead of glue. I'm using vinyl glue, but the best thing is to use is marine glue, but the vinyl glue hasn't let me down yet. I'll put hers down. Same thing as the last time. I'm not shy with my glue. I fill the holes. Any excess later, I can peel off when it dries. I would rather have more glue and have it sealed right and properly <clears throat> so that it's watertight like it should be. That screw didn't want to go in. Didn't want to stay on. One down. Do that for all the way around. 
and all will be good. There, all done. And again, I'll let it sit 24 hours, let the glue, glue cure so it's nice and sealed. Now on to my rod holders. Now for my rod holders, notice they come with this, the cap form, these come with the cap form. I don't really care for the way that it's on or that they strap it to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue in between there, small bead, and I'm going to glue all under here. Well, actually, I'll just, yeah, I'll glue all under there, and then I'll fasten it to the boat. And then, like before, like with the dry hatches, I'll be putting a nice bit of glue in the holes. Okay, now what I actually did here I just uh, changed something I did uh, glue under here like I said I was going to do but instead of gluing directly on the bottom there there goes all my screws I just like exact same as uh, the dry hatches I did a good size bead of glue all the way around and even a little bit more back here just cuz a little bit more uh, yeah a little bit more to cover there so I wanted it really good but that's basically what I did for this one and that's what I'll do for this one I'll show you what it's like when I'm all done and there you have it two ordinary fairly cheap pelican kayaks this one's Pelican Boost 100 with the tri hull. That one's a Pelican Pursuit ADX. Very basic. This one caught the boo. Yeah, verbal diarrhea. The Pursuit 80 cost me $219 on sale, regularly $319. And the Boost 100 regularly $469 and only cost me $299. But for what? $15 bucks for the hatch, $5 bucks for the eyelets 20 bucks well 25 bucks total for the mount and rod holder I don't have the rod holder on it right now another 10 bucks for the paddle clamp and another 15 bucks for the rod holders I now have a darn good fishing vessel and same with this one over here 15 buck or 15 bucks for the dry hatch and they're 8 inch dry hatches just to be clear with that, they're eight inch dry hatches. The bags do come out of them, so you can utilize everything, the space underneath. And, but back to what I was saying, 15 bucks on hers, 10 for the paddle clip, and 25 for the, like, to put this stuff on kayak and, and go, or to go buy a kayak with this stuff on it, it's gonna cost you a lot more. And it makes it look makes it look badass, like so much more convenient. Impressed. I'm still not done though. Mine. I will be uh, getting a deluxe seat or possibly an ocean kayak seat, something like that. A lot better seat for more comfortability. I will be getting uh, grip holders so I can pick up my boat. Put it over my head a little bit easier and i'm going to put an anchor trolley on mine and a rudder my daughter's uh she might get a new seat eventually right now she's happy with it and i might end up putting an anchor trolley on her she doesn't do a whole lot of fishing she's more in she does a little bit but she's more into it for the rapids and stuff like that and a little bit of paddling around but she does fish that's why she's got a rod holder on there. Last our last outing, she was fishing. So, but yeah. Oh, also, I will be taking uh, the, the sticker decals off my boat. I'll be putting my own custom decals on. I'll probably leave my daughter's unless she uh, 
asked me to do the same. So yeah, basically for 300 bucks plus in total after I put everything on, order up the seats and get in, man, I'll have uh, basically 450 bucks. I got a kayak that you'd have to spend at least 800 for. And it's a damn good kayak. Like, I went into buying these thinking Pelican was basically bottom rung. And they may be compared to, like, ocean and wilderness and stuff like that. But they still make a top top flight kayak. Just wish they had, uh, for the money, you get, well, <laughs> can't even say that because for the money, they're pretty cheap. But and it's pretty cheap to add the accessories. But I am more than happy with this kayak. As you see, it's filthy because I use it quite a bit. I just got back from a six-day journey on my kayak. Basically lived off of it. Had all my gear. Probably it's weighted for 300-pound 300, 300 capacity. But I bet you with me and all the gear on it, I definitely had over 350 pounds. And I was able to move around quite comfortably. It was a little bit more unstable than normal but just it, it, it's still I wasn't tipping over unless I really got into some strong class rapids but yeah so if you go buy a cheap kayak just know that it is cheap to upgrade your kayak and it's very easy to do vinyl glue doesn't cost that much you could actually get it in uh Sorry, got cut off there. Had my maximum time limit or recording time exceeded, so I had to delete a few things. But yeah, as I was saying, don't be afraid to go and buy a cheap kayak, and don't be afraid to buy uh, the accessories. It's very cheap to upgrade the kayak to the way you want it. And I'm very happy I did. I got a kayak that I call mine for a while. I may upgrade in a couple of years to something like an ocean kayak and stuff, but for 1500 bucks for an ocean kayak, when I got something that in the end I paid less than 450 bucks for once I get my seat and rudder and anchor trolley on it and stuff like that I, I got a darn good boat so I hope this uh, helped you in making a decision on kayaks to buy don't be afraid to buy Pelican they're good, good little kayaks and I hope it encourages you to upgrade and uh, add to your kayaks like I have thanks for watching